How about a little physics of music? We've got the guitar, we've got a string, it vibrates in the fundamental mode. Half a wave, a note here, a note here. Let's see if we can see that close up. We have the maximum. It's not moving over here, that's the node. It's a fixed end. We've got the fixed end over here too. If I want to change the frequency, I can shorten the string. Half a wave, but it's shorter. The velocity of the wave on the string is constant because the tension and the mass is constant. So by shortening the wavelength, I've increased the frequency. Velocity stays the same. Now I could change the frequency by changing the tension. I crank this up, pulls the string tighter, more tension, it snaps back to the equilibrium position quicker. I reduce the tension and the frequency is lower. Now what happens when I go from one string to the next? The frequency is increasing. Well, it's not the wavelength that's changing. It's the same length. It's got to be the tension in the string and the mass of the string. Take a look at the linear mass density of these strings. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Smaller mass density, higher frequency. Well, so far we're talking about the fundamental mode. Could I go to the second harmonic? Do you hear a difference? By gently touching the string and letting go, I'm forcing a node to appear here. That's right in the middle of the string. There's a maximum here and a maximum over here and a node right in the middle. If I press on the fret, all I get is this half of a wave. But if I gently touch it and let go, I get a half a wave here and half a wave there. So the second harmonic has a node right in the middle and I can do it on every string. That's splitting the string in half. Well, I could also do thirds. I can cut the string to a third and force a node here. It doesn't work so well elsewhere. The strings will naturally vibrate in the fundamental, the second harmonic, the third harmonic, there's the fourth. The higher up we go, the weaker the response. Do you know any songs that use guitar harmonics? How about the intro to Roundabout by Yes? Now, if you listen to the frequency generator, we find that rather annoying. It's the pure sine wave. This is not a pure sine wave. We have many sounds overlaying on top of each other. Even when I strike one string, not only do I get this half of a wave here, but I also get a little bit of the second and even the third harmonic going on simultaneously. So the string as it vibrates like this is also going like this. It's a much more complicated wave than just the pure sine wave. In fact, when you play a note, you can get other strings to start to resonate. And it makes for a very rich tone, which is what we enjoy rather than these pure sine waves. Why the thin body? Listen, what's with the hollow guitar? Well, the strings don't push on the air very efficiently. They're very thin and they don't have a lot of area. This has a lot of area to push on the air. We could demonstrate that with the tuning fork. 
a lot louder. The hole allows the sound to come out. Why the different shape? It's all hollow in here. Just like putting the tuning fork over the glass tube with the water in it. Well, this resonates. The air can resonate at different frequencies because of this shape. So any one of these strings can find a direction of air to cause it to shake in sympathy. Well, playing the guitar gives us rich sounds, not that pure tone. Maybe you'll enjoy this. I studied for my physics. But don't do me no good. Well, I studied for my physics, but it don't do me no good. Ought to be in cooking, like my counselor told me I should. It's a low down, dirty shame. Well, there you have it for the guitar. What do we have here? A recorder. Physics is all over this music stuff. I'm changing the effective length of this tube and it's open at this end and it's sort of closed off at this end. It's pretty complicated stuff. It's a lot harder than just a glass tube with a tuning fork over the top. Uh, it's a little like blowing in a bottle. Well, we can change the length of the column of air with adding the water. I'm changing the length of the column of air. The shorter the column, the higher the pitch. Well, I'll leave you with this physics problem. If you know what a low E is, you know the frequency. If we measure the length, we got the wavelength. If we weigh a guitar string, you could get the linear mass density. You'd be able to calculate the tension in the string. Could you imagine how we could measure that tension to test it? We can do it. Think about it.